salutations well guys i'm back the channel has been taking a bit of a hiatus but we are back up and running today we will be taking a look at a true low cost champion the often underrated fx series the fx 8320 was released in october of 2012 and is based on the 32 nanometer pile driver architecture with 1.2 billion transistors and a die size of 315 millimeters squared. With a base frequency of 3.5 and an unlocked multiplier, this chip can often overclock to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores. Its 125 watt TDP is a bit high compared to more modern 8 core CPUs and will be your main limitation when overclocking. If you're willing to shell out the cash for a beefy air or liquid cooler, you can quite possibly achieve the mighty 5 swagger hertz overclock. Still, with 8 cores and a total of 16 megs of cash, this budget beast is quite capable in 2017 and offers a great value when it comes to some light content creation. Released as a direct competitor to the i5-3450, the FX series has a known flaw in its single thread performance due to its shared floating point unit and is sometimes referred to as a 4 core, 8 module CPU. In my opinion, and with my understanding of hardware, it's still an 8 core, perhaps with an asterisk. We can see here its performance is around the level of a Sandy Bridge i5 and with its low price tag and availability in the used market, this CPU is a great option if you want to compute on a serious budget. I was able to pick up a couple 8320s on eBay last month for around $15 each, making them a great value for an 8-core overclockable chip that should be good for general and light workstation tasks. And while the FX series is on a dead socket, giving us no upgrade path, it is readily available. A capable motherboard can be found quite easily and for less than $50, making this a $65 CPU and motherboard combo that's hard to beat without snagging an OEM office PC. The single thread performance of this chip can be rather limiting in some applications such as DirectX 11 gaming, but overall when clocked and locked to 4.4 or 4.2 GHz, it proves to be very capable indeed. Let's take a look at a few benchmarks. Our test system includes a 990FX motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR3-1866 memory, and one 256 gigabyte SSD. Our FX8320 was run at both stock and then manually overclocked to 4.4 GHz on all cores by adjusting the multiplier in the BIOS. First up in Passmark, we have a baseline score of 8,313 jumping all the way to 9,648 when overclocked and locked to 4.4 GHz. Up next in our productivity benchmark suite, we have a 7-zip score of 20,399 at our 3.7 GHz turbo stock and 24,285 with our overclock. For CPU-Z results, we've got a rather anemic 1396 on our single thread rating but when overclocked, it climbs to a respectable 1744, putting the CPU on par with an i7-2600K. Nice. In Black Hole version 4.2, we are seeing a little under 11,000, with an overclock score of 13,080. And interestingly, with our overclock, the floating point and integer scores decreased slightly as our clock speed increased. In our HWBOT CPU encoding test, our 1080p score for our stock clock is 14.79 frames per second. But with our overclock, we are seeing an increase to 18.21. Not bad for 1080p content creation using X265. And finally, these benchmarks would not be complete without Cinebench R15. Here we see, with a stock clock of 3.5, the expected score of around 567 and an impressive 693 with our overclock, putting this CPU just slightly ahead of a stock i7-3770. So, only one question remains. Can it game? So let's head on over to the 3D Mark CPU rankings, where we can see the FX8320 is falling just below the i5-4670K, and just above the i3-6300. Not too bad for a five-year-old chip. 
If we jump over to user benchmark, we can see an average bench of 52% or 235th out of the 966 CPUs tested. The pass mark score is also not too shabby, beating out the mighty i5-6600K at 3.5 GHz. And finally, our game debate rating is showing that this CPU with a decent overclock is going to be able to handle most modern titles at 1080p. Still, I know what you're thinking. What about Ryzen or the Pentium G4560? Well, the Pentium is in short supply right now and around $90 but undoubtedly a bit faster, and its single core muscle is supreme if you can find one. The Ryzen 1200 is also a worthy competitor to our aging FX chip, but for $110, is it the best value? With a 3.4 GHz turbo speed and eight megabytes of cache, this 14 nanometer four threaded CPU sips power with a TDP of only 65 watts and also supports DDR4 memory, unlike our FX chip. It boasts a Cinebench R15 score of 604 with a single threaded rating just shy of 1800 in CPU mark, compared to our 8320's 1398 single thread. If we compare the two at CPU.com, we can see the Ryzen 1200 is up to 40% faster in certain applications, with almost 60% single core floating point advantage, but surprisingly loses out by 21% in multi core integer speed against the 8 cores of the FX chip. If we do a quick total system cost comparison, we can see where the 8320 really shines. For less than $125 for the platform versus the $231 for the Ryzen 1200 with the cheapest available motherboard and memory. The FX 8320, with its Cinebench score of 693, not only bests the Ryzen 1200 in some productivity task, but seriously crushes it with a per dollar score of over 5.6 CB per dollar, nearly double the value of the Ryzen 1200. For $15, you really can't go wrong. And while this CPU may have gotten a bad rap at launch for its less than desirable single core prowess, nowadays with its low cost and high core count, it's a great budget buy that can still push a few pixels. There's a lot of value out there in the used PC world if you're willing to turn a few screws, brush a little dust off, and get your hands dirty. Check out my OEM Office PC video if you're looking for something low cost and more for gaming. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's good to be back, and I'll see you all again soon. Game on, my friends. Voodoo out.